Hello and welcome to episode 3. Today I'm going to be alongside you and we are going to be building a bot together. This is going to be an example of a website support bot, otherwise known as a lead gen bot. If you've seen the first video on my channel, you know that my very, very first client was an exotic car dealership. So, so we're going to be doing something similar today. Here we have a very, very good example website that we are going to be building a bot for. These type of websites are ideal because they do have a sort of commerce side to them. They have about us sections, contact us sections. But the most important part is their inventory, which is what we are going to be mostly building this bot around. All right, so we'll start the bot off with a greeting. So we'll just put in a send text card and we'll say hi welcome to prestige marquee i'm pretty sure it's called and we'll get a nice champagne emoji just because this is obviously a very high level business and now let's get the intent of our users so why are they using our bot are they browsing for a car do they want to know more about the business so we'll drag in a i think a single choice card will do the trick here so how can we help so first they can check out cars that are on sale so they can either look at our inventory. So I'm looking for a car and we're going to keep this bot pretty bare bones. So this is just going to be exploring how we would. In this example, Prestige Marquee has a very, very wide range of cars for sale. So let's try put as much of those cars in this bot. That's what I want this bot to be sort of a way to browse for cars without checking out the website, even though it is great. It's just an example. So we'll make a new node and we'll ask them, are you looking for a specific car? We'll drag in a single choice and we'll ask, are you looking for something specific or just browsing? If they're looking for something specific, uh, i.e. I'm looking for a car, we'll drag a node for there. And if they're just browsing, we'll drag a node for here. So if they're looking for something specific, let's first ask them um, if they're doing more off-road, on-road on or something in between. So we'll make a node for on-road, we'll make a node for off-road and we'll make a node for this. And we'll save it as road choice. So we're not going to actually have different different transitions based on what they say uh, here specifically. So you can just click these and it will mean that basically uh, it just, I think it's just an aesthetic change because whether you leave this on or off, it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, they're automatically on, but now we turn them off. And for our next node, we'll ask them if they have a specific brand preference. So we'll put the first option as none because they probably don't, but then we'll just add in a few brands that this website has. And we'll save this as brand choice. And we're also going to disable all these uh, little dots again because we're not going to be transitioning based on them. Now we'll ask for their budget. We'll drag in a single choice card because we're going to be giving our users options. And we're going to save it as budget. First price range will be 0 to 100,000. Then 100,000 to 500. 500 to 70 to a million. 1 million to let's say 1.5 million. 1.5 million to 2 million. 2 million to 2.5 million, 2.5 to 3, 3.5 to 4. Now we have quite a few budget options here. Once again, we are going to disable them all. There we go. Now we have enough criteria to show our user relevant cards. It's going to reorder our stuff a little bit, give them the appropriate names. Now we are going to import those cars into our bot. So we're going to create a new table and we'll call this cars. So our first criteria in the cars will be the car name, then the budget in which the car is located, you know, in which budget range is this car. Then we'll have the, have the brand and then the, and then the road type. So now let's start importing. This is kind of just going to be the, like the slow part. You're just going to add records and we'll add another one called KMs. That just means kilometers or mileage. Now that we have all our cars, now we need to find a way to show them to the user based on the criteria that they gave us. So we'll make a new node and we'll put in a find record. Drag in our first one. We'll select our table and we'll say a person's road choice, which is uh, right here, is uh, whatever it is. So road choice is at road choice and we'll save it as road choice cars oh forgot my camel case road choice cars paste it like so brand is at brand choice and we'll save this as brand choice cars and this one will be for our budget so we'll say budget is at budget and we'll call the variable budget choice cars put these in different nodes in case we want to run them at different times because we have a option for none here in our brand preference and we don't have none as a brand in our table, we need to make an expression so that it skips to find a record based on the brand so that we don't end up searching for a car with the brand name of none. 
So we'll drag in an expression and we'll call this none. And now bot press generate I is not needed yet. So we're going to turn it off and we'll say workflow dot brand choice is equal to the going chronological order. And let's say I really like Ferrari. Okay, I'm looking for a car. I'm going to go on road and I really like Ferrari. And now my budget is, let's say it is anywhere from 2 million to 2.5 million. And then we got our conversation ended. So if we check our variables over here, we see that we got seven results. We got seven different on road cars available. We'll just add a wait for user input at the end. So here we told it we're looking for a car, we're on road, we want BMW and we want it from 1 million to about 1.5 million Rand. So if we check our variables here for road choice, basically we have seven cars here, which are on road vehicles. We have two cars in the user's price range in the budget, and we have three cars. Uh, of, we do not have seven cars that are BMW in his price range and is on road. So we need to find a way so that we only display to the user. We'll make a new variable called suggested cars. We'll make it an array and you'll see why in a second and we'll add that to our workflow. Right, so here we have some code that basically looks in all our variables to see if there is a car that is in all three of them. Because if there is one in all three of them, it means it matched every single one of our criteria. Now we're gonna make a new node. We're gonna drag in a single choice card. Now this is the first time you've seen me do this, but this is the most useful use case scenario for an array. So as you see here in choices, we can have, have we can have varying choices based on this array. So we just click the array. So we just click the variable option here. Then we put an at and then our suggested cars. And now our user will be shown the uh, available cars based on the criteria. Here is a list of our available cars. So you just say workflow dot suggested cars. We'll say two curly brackets, workflow dot suggested cars. However, we have a problem. Our array isn't just the car's name. It is just very, very long list of stuff. And you can't have that in a single choice card. We just want to give it the car's name. Now we go back into our single choice and instead of suggested cars, now have car names. And there we go. Here is our first option of our available cars. Now, obviously this can have more than one. It can have three or four or five or six or seven. Now, if the user clicks on it, we want to give that user more info. So we'll make a new node. First, let's show the user an image of the car. So we'll drag in an image card. We'll select variable as our image. So now we want to display that URL of the image. Now for our image itself, because it's a variable and it's a string, we can just use our usual notation workflow. Let's save our user's car choice as car choice. But this is pretty easy to code. You just need to have a variable for the index of car, this is a number variable. And then we just find the index of the uh, car choice of our user, depending on the number that the car is in the keys. So now that we have that, we can use it in our image. Workflow dot suggested cars. And now here we use a very, very cool method. We place square brackets and that will basically mean we are using a variable inside of a variable. Because the, because the key because the number of the key, basically the index will always be different. We can't say workflow dot suggested cars and then a zero because it's probably not always going to be zero, but sometimes it might be the third key in an array. It might be the fourth. So we need to use variables. So this is where that index comes in workflow dot index car. Now that that's inside, we'll say dot URL for the picture URL and the title will just say the car name. This is just like a little one time error of it not showing the name, but that's basically how you display variable pictures. And there we go. Works just perfectly. Now let's add a single choice card once again. And we'll just say, how can I help further? Let's give them the first option of they'd like to know more about the car or if they have a question. So if they'd like to know more about the car, we'd like to take them to the web page that the car is on. So we'll make a new node and now we'll make another field in our table for the URL of the web page of the car. Make another one. We'll just call it web page. And now we paste the web page of that car and we'll paste right there. We'll put our web page URL right here. Workflow, we'll put brackets like that because we're using a variable here. Workflow dot suggested cars and then our index. So workflow dot index and then dot web page. And there we go. Now we have a clickable link that people can follow and it will take them to the web page of that specific car. Now we'll make a new node and ask the user if there's anything else that we can help them with. First, we'll drag in our question with a text card. Is there anything else that I can help you with? Then we'll drag in a wait for user input card. 
And this is basically how we do it with a knowledge agent bot. Then we're going to make a new node like this, but it's sort of going to be like our conversation loop. So we'll make sure our knowledge agent is enabled and answer manually is turned on. Let's quickly add a knowledge base, which is just going to be the website. Right click, new knowledge base, and then search the web. Now, the reason we're not adding the web pages is because the website is going to change with time. So we want to keep the information up to date. We have our URL right here, paste it. So we'll just delete that. And there we go. Here we are already searching in all our knowledge bases. So now we're going to drag in another raw input card and we're going to put the bot's response in this one so that we can use the bot's response as the question. It gives it a much more fluid flow, a streamlined flow, a really chat GPT feel like. There's not like every single time a question, do you have more questions or something like that? It's just smooth. So it's turn.knowledgeagent.answer and that's the bot's response. So now if we ask about where are you guys located, it tells us exactly where they are located. They are located at 212 Bram Fisher Drive, Randburg. Now we'll just close the loop like this. Now we can answer questions infinitely, basically. It says, I asked, do you have any Porsches in stock? It says, yes, we do. Obviously, it's not going to list every single one it has, but this is just a very, very basic bot. Now we'll add an option to this choice option like this, and we'll make that option. I have no further questions. So now anytime the user's finished asking questions, they can just click this button. We'll make an end node, just a standard node like this. I have no further questions. And we'll just say, okay, thank you for visiting us. Now, let's say your user wants to get in contact with you guys. So we'll add an option that says get in contact. We'll link this. I have a question to a different node with a raw input card that says, sure, ask away. And we'll link that to this universal one right here. I will make a new node, drag get in contact to it, and then we'll ask a few questions. We'll ask if we can get their email address. Now that we have the email address, we want to store it in a table. Now, in the old days, we'd have to use Google Sheets with an API, but this is 2024, so now BotPress has their own table. So we're gonna create a new table. We're gonna call it leads, and we'll just have one field that is called email. Then we'll drag in an insert record card, select our leads table, and our email is just the new email. We don't need a result variable. So there we go. We'll drag this back up to the top. And now our user's in a very, very nice little loop. So let's try it out. Get in contact. What is my email address? I'll give it my email address. And if we check our leads table, there's my email address. Now you might say, you know, Ibar, this is not very advanced. Well, the point is not to give you something just that you can sell. I want you to give you guys the framework and the knowledge on how to build this stuff because it's so much more valuable. Bot that I just gave you and we built it completely and it's just this amazing lead, lead gen bot. Well, I've done it before. It was my very first video on the channel. But the point of this video is to show you how we do all this stuff so you can do it yourself in your own application. This is very bare bones, but now you have a very, very good foundation on how to build and the logic that you should use while building. I hope you enjoyed this video. So I'll see you in episode four.